Hi everyone, it's the English Simmer here, and I am both excited and also slightly apprehensive to be making this video for you all today. If that doesn't sum up how I felt about the Sims franchise probably since The Sims 3, I don't know what will slap it on my headstone. So if you missed the news, we're actually getting a Sims Summit in October. It's happening the 18th of October at 10 a.m. PT and this bit of news is very very interesting because usually when we're getting like a quarterly teaser kind of the roadmaps that they do for the year they never normally announce an announcement sometimes they do but usually it's just a little teaser and then they're like hey here you go and it's just like a picture on Twitter this one is different because this is gonna be a streamed event it's called behind the sims summit and it had this little teaser that said tune in for more big The Sims announcements but I basically wanted to make this video to go through like what I think everything could mean and also what does the news of The Sims 4 now being basically a free to play game mean for the rest of the franchise going forward in the future. Honestly, I swear the wait for The Sims 5 is literally longer than waiting in line to see the queen in state. Also, please do keep in mind that absolutely none of this has been confirmed. And again, I didn't make this video to be like, The Sims 5 is coming out because we don't know. And like I said, we don't usually get an announcement this big for a quarterly teaser. Yes, it does kind of have the vibe of it with sort of being a different theme, which we've definitely seen the quarterly teasers be themed. Themed. Usually very big like expansion pack announcements or things that are coming to The Sims 4 have been done at events but they've been done at wider events for example Gamescom or their very own EA Play. We didn't get an EA Play this year so maybe this is just The Sims team being like hey there's a lot we need to talk about and it's gonna be easiest to do it through a live stream but I think they wouldn't have all this branding just for like a summer of what's to come unless there's an announcement. I'm secretly hoping that them not specifically saying The Sims 4 means that we're gonna get an announcement that we're gonna get My Sims on Switch. That's my one hope. We're taking a solid guess that The Sims 5 has been in production. If you've been paying attention to The Sims community for the last few years, Maxis have posted a bunch of different jobs, definitely hinting towards The Sims franchise as a whole. There is actually a secret project called Project Lotus, which has kind of been used in job listings alongside The Sims 4. They've been looking for people who are able to create massively scalable and globally available web services for millions of players. Andrew Wilson talked about the next iteration of The Sims, where he mentioned The Sims Online, and then that was kind of linked to, oh, could there be a multiplayer version of The Sims 5? Are they gonna have the game be like solely multiplayer? Is it just gonna have a section of the game that's multiplayer? People with interests for new business models such as subscription services and cross-platform gaming. And I've made a video on all of those rumors, so I will actually link that down below. But I think this holds up a little bit more because obviously the other day they announced that on October the 8th, 18th, which lines up with the Sims Summit, is the fact that the Sims 4 base game is going to be free to play. And we all hate the words free to play. I feel like free to play has really like developed into something that means that we're going to have a sort of multiplayer element to a game and there's going to be microtransactions. It's no surprise. I feel like the standard was given by Fortnite when it came to free to play games. More recently, Fall Guys have done it, Apex Legends have done it. Apex is super interesting because it's an EA title. And there's also currently another EA title that is in development. That is obviously the skate game. And they just did a whole boardroom, which I will actually link down below as well. And I know like skate doesn't really have any relation to The Sims. However, some of the language that they used in that boardroom video really reminded me of how The Sims team have taught 
talked about The Sims 4 recently. For example, they were like, oh, we want like live service updates to this game and we want Skate to live forever. They also said they want content to come for a long, long time. And that's something we've heard repeatedly with The Sims 4, literally for eight years. Every single time there's like rumors of The Sims 5 happening, they're like, nope, Sims 4 still has more content to come for years and years, which is honestly the answer nobody wants to hear. But it makes sense because if they have been working on and developing The Sims 5, that doesn't mean that we'll be able to play it in like six months down the road. That could honestly mean that they are working on it and they kind of want to bring the community into it a little bit more and it might not be released for like another three to four years, maybe even longer, which I'm kind of hoping it's not that long, but it has the potential. Skate, however, are doing something really, really cool where they have community playtests now set up. So you can actually apply just like as the general public, as a skate community member to their website. And then from this summer, they're actually looking to invite playtesters from the community to then play the game whilst it's in development. Honestly, I kind of have my fingers crossed that that could carry over if this does happen to be The Sims 5, because we all know simmers are very vocal. We all have a lot of different ideas is we all play the game differently, which I think is one of my favorite things about the Sims franchise as a whole. So I do think if they opened it up to like a community gameplay tester sort of scenario, I think that would be sick. I think we could end up with a really, really good future Sims game and people could like give their feedback about things that do work, things that don't work. We've seen it with the community built packs for the Sims 4 that we love giving our opinion of like what should be included, what shouldn't be included. I honestly, I'm really down for this. But back to the free to play equals microtransactions because in my brain, obviously we've had the DLC set up for The Sims literally since The Sims 1. To be fair, The Sims 1 only ever used to have expansion packs. Then in The Sims 2, we got stuff packs and we got expansion packs. The Sims 3 also had expansion packs and stuff packs, but then also introduced The Sims 3 store. I think The Sims 2 had a store. It wasn't as prevalent as The Sims 3, which kind of worked like microtransactions because they were much smaller like bundles of stuff for a very like overpriced price. You basically had to use real life money to buy Sim points to then buy stuff on the stores. And they used to actually be promoted in the game. Like they would have a little gold symbol next to them being like, hey, you can pick up this item. And like one hair was like three pounds sometimes. The conversion was terrible. It was an absolute rip. I'm not saying that I didn't buy stuff off the Sims 3 store because I definitely did, but they were definitely microtransactions. And obviously in the Sims 4, we now have kits, which again is that sort of like smaller bundle, but for like quite an expensive price. It's my biggest gripe with the Sims 4 kits is the fact that they're too expensive for what they are. But I do feel like The Sims 4 has kind of been a testing ground for microtransactions. Also, I think scenarios have the potential to be like a big tested feature. I can definitely see that rolling over into the future of the franchise. Like I said, there was a job listing that mentioned story mode. They were looking for people who had non-linear simulation experience with story writing, with narrative games and decisions modding and machinima. To me, that very much sounds like, oh, hey, we're looking for someone who can tell these stories within a simulation game, give players choices and things like that. And in The Sims, I like having a wrench thrown in the works. I like getting to choose between like chance cards and being like, okay, I'll do this and it leads to this. But I do also like the freedom of a simulation game. So I'm actually down for that like storytelling and lore within the future of the franchise. And I I think that scenarios are kind of a way for the team to be like, okay, we're thinking of this potential feature for future Sims games, but how is it gonna look? How do the community feel about them? So I would love to hear how you feel about both kits and scenarios, considering in my brain, they're the two like tester fields we have currently. I personally hope that they stick to the traditional DLC style instead of having microtransactions. I know that if The Sims 5 is a potential 
actual like live service and it is gonna be like free to play from the get-go which again the sims 4 has been out for eight years and yes it has been sold for like five pounds recently it's also been free at other points in its lifespan i do think they maybe have just decided to make it free so they can see how it's gonna go down how many new players are gonna get on board and then be like hey if this goes well the sims 5 may very well be free to play and if you think about it we've already been getting those live service updates in the sims 4 when it comes to big base game updates before a dlc drop so what they could potentially do is take that like dlc add it as the new like gameplay content but all for free if the sims 5 is free to play and then all the cosmetic assets for example like everything that you can get in create sim build and buy mode and things like that could potentially be the micro transactions of the sims 5 i will hold my hands up and say i really don't like that i think from a consumer perspective it's very very like predatory in a way it's kind of like telling people like hey you should consistently spend your money and yeah i know the traditional traditional DLC also does that. But I think that DLC has like a longer period. It means that people can like save up if they know they are gonna wanna like a new pack or something like that. You can always kind of have it like tucked away if you are in a privileged position to do so. Whereas when it comes to like aesthetics and microtransactions, I feel like it's constantly just getting people to spend money. Also, we've talked about The Sims 5 potentially having a subscription service because again, on the job listings, they've been looking for people who have that experience. And again, I'm not really the biggest fan of subscription services, especially in gaming. I like to buy a game and like know that it's mine. The only subscription sort of thing that I personally can get behind in gaming is the Xbox Game Pass, because once you actually do download a game from the Xbox Game Pass, it means that you own it. You have it in your library and unless you delete that and then Xbox also delete it from their library, it's your game to keep. And I feel like if the Sims did go to a subscription service like you could potentially go off it for like a year or two and be like oh I don't really have the funds to pay for this right now and then you just lose the game completely and it just feels like a way to absolutely eradicate your fan base. I don't like the idea of subscriptions I don't want it for the future of the Sims franchise. Please Sims team I am begging you just let me own the game and let me have it as my own. And of course I have to address the elephant in the room the one thing that gets sims players so revved up and that is the fact that we could potentially have a multiplayer game in the sims 5. I don't want it you all know that I don't want it I've talked about it in the past but free to play microtransactions live updated services I feel like they all point to a direction of like games that have multiplayer such as Fortnite, Fall Guys, Apex, Skate even have just confirmed that this is going to be a multiplayer and I think what's interesting interesting about like comparing like the sims franchise to skate is that they're both obviously under ea so i do actually feel like they could be quite similar even though they're two completely different games like made for two completely different like communities and the biggest issue i have with multiplayer within the sims is not even that i personally enjoy single player games if i wanted to interact with people i absolutely would not be playing the sims and i think when it comes down to the core of The Sims. It is a single player simulation game where people want to tell their own stories. They want to have the safety and the comfort of the game to tell the stories that they want to tell, to build what they want to build. And I feel like if you transfer that over into a multiplayer thing where people can like mess with your Sims or you have to interact or people can like set fire to your builds. Whilst yes, the chaos goblin inside of me is like, oh my God, think of the amazing videos that I could do with like Steph and Jesse if we had multiplayer in The Sims 4. It also takes away the biggest element of my comfort game. But that's not my biggest issue with multiplayer. My biggest issue with multiplayer is if we do get it, it's gonna create a lot of money. We've seen it with GTA 5. Rockstar have literally forgotten about the single player element of GTA, but the money is in multiplayer. So Rockstar are obviously like, oh, well, we're gonna focus on the one thing that brings us money. We're gonna focus on the cash cow and of course, we're gonna milk it and we're gonna consistently like update that and that's what scares me about having multiplayer in The Sims 4. I feel like the single player experience that we've all come to know and love for the last 22 years of the franchise could literally be blown out of the water if they introduce multiplayer.
multiplayer. The only way I personally would be comfortable with having multiplayer in The Sims 5 is definitely like if it were like Minecraft. I could create my own personal server. It would be a private server that I could invite my friends to. Take Dr. Gluon's recent videos about The Sims 4 multiplayer mod. I think that's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of fun because you're playing with people you trust, you can communicate with. They all like hang out on voice chat and that's what makes it fun. I think if you're just like chatting with randomers and they have like the experience to fuck with your game, I would honestly get so stressed out. I think it would be fun for like five minutes and then I'd just be like, okay, give me my Sims back. And also when it comes to that, I definitely think that it would split the team in half. So even if we did have like multiplayer as an optional thing that you could do, I think that the team might actually be spread like too thin. And that's also a concern because it's like, oh, I would actually really prefer like a dedicated team working on single player and giving us all those experiences that we know and love in The Sims 4 rather than like splitting that team in half and having like half focused on multiplayer and the other half focused on single player because then I feel like both of them are just gonna be like half-assed games and not like a brand new thing for the franchise for the community to get excited about. And that pretty much wraps up all my thoughts on this. Please keep in mind I didn't make this video to like hype up the announcement on October the 18th. I'm still very very apprehensive of this. Like yeah whilst I'm excited that my favorite franchise is continuing and yes whilst I am ready to kind to hang up the coat on The Sims 4 and like move on to something else. I still have all of these worries for like what it actually potentially could look like. So I would love to hear all of your thoughts on this one. I know we've talked about like a lot of this in the past. So like I said, I will link that video where I was addressing like The Sims 5 rumors. I think one of the most fun parts of being part of an online community like The Sims community is chatting with other players about like what they would want to see, what they wouldn't want to see, but I would just say like set your limits on your imagination. I'm honestly going into this thinking oh you know what this is just gonna be a quarterly teaser. <laughs> I'm not calling the shots on anything. The last two years have taught me that I absolutely cannot call the shots on anything. I mean come on none of us expected Journey to Batu, did we? But yeah I would love to hear your thoughts, ideas, things you do want in the future of the franchise, things you don't want, what you think about the free-to-play model, what impact you think that could have on the future of the sims franchise i want to hear it all so leave it in the comments down below you lot know i love making these types of videos purely so that i can read the discussion and speculation down in the comments so get involved i appreciate you all and i will speak to you all in my next one bye now